Hello everyone. This is our ninth video. And today we are going to talk about negotiations with sellers. Hello. Mr. Izgi, in our previous videos, we mentioned negotiation, but in this video, we will focus on negotiation with sellers, including pro procurement and post procurement processes. First, let's start with the negotiation strategy that a project manager must follow. Yeah, negotiations are discussions to reach an agreement. In order to aim for a mutual agreement, they can specify the rights, obligations, and terms of a purchase. In many companies, we see that the procurement manager or the procurement staff members have key responsibilities and authority to sign a contract. The project manager and the project team members are partially engaged. In traditional project management settings, the project manager and the team members very often know in advance what kind of items need to be procured. So the procurement negotiations can start at an early stage of the project. In an agile environment, a procurement activity may not be as intense as in traditional environments or may not be needed at all. If needed for a long period of time, then one strongly prefers that the procurement items should be as small as possible, small in quotations. This case would be preferred to a case where one buys a large number of small items within one single order. If what is purchased is a service or small size goods, then agile approach can become suitable. If this is not the case, I mean, if we purchase one single piece, high priced equipment, then it is very fair to claim that the agile approach is not suitable for this portion of the work. As far as the role of a procurement manager is concerned, I think of this as using expert judgment in the project. Here, the procurement manager becomes the subject matter expert. Yes, that's true, Mr. Tekir. Okay, before signing a contract, there are some kind of agreement documents that can be prepared. First, let's start with the statement of work. Can you define this document, Mr. Rizgi? It is the narrative description of requirements. It can be accompanied by a request for proposal. Okay. Can you give some examples for the other negotiation items? Uh, for example, a schedule with milestones and dates, performance supporting expectations, pricing and payment terms. Also, quality related work such as inspection, quality requirements, and acceptance criteria. Also, warranty and future support, incentive or penalties, insurance and performance bonds, subcontractor approvals, terms and conditions, change request handling, termination clauses and dispute resolution are other items that should be negotiated. Yes. Let's talk about the post-procurement work, such as service level agreement, which is abbreviated as SLA. Yes, you are right. Service level agreement are very important. Could you please define us what SLA is? It is a contract. It is between an external or internal service provider and the end user. It describes the level of 
service expected from the service provider? What can be the expectations? For example, functional performance, service warranty, and so on. The service warranty may include availability, speed, security, continuity, and so on. SLA shows the expected level of performance. The aim is, of course, to achieve customer satisfaction. Now, let's talk about the details of the SLA with an example uh, that we found on the internet. I'm sharing it on the screen now. You can see the link in the description section of this video. Now, let's look at the main section of this document. Okay, uh, as we see on the screen, part uh, 1.3 and 1.4 are the main sections of this sample uh, SLA. Now, as we see, levels of unavail unavailability uh, is broken down into three categories. The categories are explained below, uh, which are level one downtime, level two major, and level three minor. For a level one type unavailability, then the first attempt to solve the problem uh, will be within two hours during working hours and within 18 hours outside working hours. For level two, we have 48 hours and 86 hours. And for level three, we have seven weeks and seven weeks. Uh, let's see how these uh, levels are uh, defined. And let's start with the downtime. So uh, downtime uh, includes, as we see here, critical functionality, all users of one customer are affected. Uh, the examples are shown here. Level two, uh, major, defined as major, includes when non-critical functionality is affected, technical functional bug is seen, and the problem needs to be reproducible on other systems by fleet style based on clear instructions from the customer. Also examples are given here. And uh, level three, the minor, uh, includes cases like minor failure, non-critical functionality, cases uh, which uh, will not prevent the use of the services. The problem needs to be reproducible on other systems by, by fleets there, based on clear instructions from the customer. Uh, also, we see the examples uh, here. Okay, Mr. Rizgi, thank you very much. I'm stopping sharing. We have reached the end of our video. Thanks to the people watching us. I want to remind you to subscribe to our channel and like our videos. Additionally, our Patreon page has been live you can support us from our Patreon page. Uh, hope to see you in our next video. Bye. We'll be glad if you write your comments below our videos. Also, feel free to ask any questions you might have. Contact us using our email addresses if you are interested in our courses. Goodbye.